Hey everyone, this is Terry. Today we're going to cover lesson four in the series, new owner series for the Luminaire. In this lesson, we'll be talking about our machine settings. The machine settings pages are found at the top of the screen right here. So we'll go into the settings pages and what we're going to do is we'll start back into the general sewing settings. This begins on page one of your settings. The first is the width control. If you engage this on, this means your speed control, if it's moved from left to right, no longer works as a speed control. What it's doing is it's working as a width control with zigzag stitches. So you use it in conjunction with those zigzag stitches to adjust the width. I typically leave this off. The fine adjustment, both horizontal and vertical, is used in your character decorative stitches. If your stitches are not forming correctly, you can use this to adjust it. The default values are zero. Your presser foot height is the default value of 7.5. You can adjust it for a very low setting for fine fabrics up to a high setting of 10 millimeters. The default is 7.5. Your presser foot pressure is used depending on the type of fabric that you have. You may want to adjust that pressure. So the default value is three, it goes to four, and as low as one. Your automatic fabric sensor, will, if you have it turned on, will automatically sense the thickness of your fabric. So it's going to adjust so that it feeds with the perfect settings for the, the thickness of your fabric. So that's the reason I leave it on. Your initial page is whether you want to start out your sewing in a position that's in the middle needle position or left hand. You have full coverage on the left hand of all of your feed dogs. In the middle, you will not have as much coverage as you have on the left. But having sewn for years, I prefer the middle needle position. Pivoting height is used in conjunction with the pivot function in sewing. The default value is 3.2. You can adjust it to 7.5 and as low as 2.0. This works in conjunction with pivoting, which is found under your sewing, and it's right here. So if you have the pivot function on, uh, what I'll do is I'll sew for a moment and I don't have thread in the machine, but you will see when I stop, my foot comes up and it pivots at the height of the pivoting position that I have in the settings page. What I'm going to do is I'll disengage that, but the reason you use it is so you can turn your fabric under your needle very easily. So it locks everything down. It's holding your fabric in place. It's one of the features that I like the most about this machine. So I'll turn that off and we'll go back to our settings page. All right, the next setting that we're going to talk about is our free motion height. You can adjust it between 0.5 all the way down to 0.4, excuse me, 4.0. I leave it on the default, which is one millimeter. Your dual feed adjustment is an adjustment for the speed of the belt on the dual feed foot. It can be adjusted to a plus 10 and minus 10 with zero, meaning that it is evenly feeding your fabric. With some fabric with a nap, you may want to adjust it because they may move at different speeds. Automatic presser foot lift it can be used if it's engaged, your foot will automatically go down whenever you press your presser foot uh, or, or uh, for your foot controller, excuse me, I lost my train of thought. So I like to leave that on because I want it to automatically lower my presser foot. If I press the thread cutter on the button, it will lower it and cut the thread as well. All right, let's go to the next page. This is where you can select on your home screen and sewing if you want to start in the utility menu and menu one or in the queue menu. The next is for reinforcement priority. So reinforcement priority, and what we'll do is we'll look at our initial stitch page. You can see where I have it. And we'll also talk about reinforcement priority. I leave mine on because I like to piece and I don't want to have reinforcement stitches for piecing. But let's just go into setting and we'll choose okay. And we'll go in, if you have your 
your initial page setting to the one menu for utilities, it will start here in the position you selected. If you choose the Q menu, it would start here in the needle position that you selected. We're going to go back and choose menu one. Now what I want to show you is if you look at the screen, I'll zoom you in, you will see a dot or like what looks like a quote mark over some stitches. If you see the quote, it means it works in conjunction with the reverse foot. Now I cover all of this under my lesson on utility stitches, so make sure you watch that. And then you'll also see a single mark, which is like a dot, that works in conjunction with that reinforcement button that sews in place. All right, we'll go back to our settings page and into this area, and we'll go to the next page. Your initial screen is whether you want to see the opening pages or if you want to see the home page or the sewing and embroidery screen. I happen to like to have the opening pages on. Your echo mode is whether you want to be in an echo mode of say 10 minutes, what will happen is your screensaver will come on, touch the screen, it'll wake up your machine. And if you have shut off support mode on after it reaches whatever this time increment is here, your machine will be in a shut off mode meaning that when you touch that screen, you're going to have to shut your machine down because it lowers the power on your screen and your machine. Screensaver is where you can elect to have the screensaver come on at an incremental time. I like to use five minutes and have that on. You can also go in and add your own customize screenshots. If you want them to be used as a screensaver, you'll choose customize and you'll add them and you'll choose which order you want them to appear. I'll choose all. Mouse pointer is where you can choose the pointer that you want to use for your mouse. And you can see I can change it between this white pointer, this dark head here, or I can choose the first option. Okay, we'll go back into our settings and let's go back into this page. We were on page five. The projector can be adjusted. If you want to adjust the brightness on it, you choose start. You will notice at the bottom of the screen, you'll have the brightness indicator. It starts out as a four. You can see that right here. You can adjust it by lowering it. I leave mine on four, but you can use the plus minus to adjust it. I'll choose OK to turn the projector off. You can also change the background colors here between black, gray, or white. Depending on your fabric, you may need to change that background. Your pattern outline is if you're in your decorative stitches, if you have this on, what will happen is the background of a line will appear around those stitches to define it. I typically leave it off. Pointer color is an election you can choose based upon the fabric that you're using. I have mine set for green and you can change it between this kind of plus sign or a dot. Your camera needle position setting is a setting that you use to calibrate your camera. You do not need to do this often. You have little white stickers that came with your machine. They're in a plastic bag. You can use that to calibrate your camera, and I covered it in the video close to update kit one and around upgrade kit uh, or upgrade 2.0. All right, we'll now go to the next page. I am going to adjust my camera just a little bit, and we'll go into page seven. In page seven, this is where you can see if you have any any upgrades that are added to your machine. You can also see the service count on your machine, your total count, your number of your machine, and your version number. And I'm using version 2.01. I don't really like to share this information because I don't really know if somebody can use my machine number or not. But to be safe rather than sorry, I like to hide that information. We'll go to page eight. This is where you are, if you're working in embroidery, you're going to go to this section. You'll notice now it's moved over to the embroidery 
portion of the settings pages. This is how you move quickly between those settings pages. And you'll see you can choose which size embroidery hoop you're wanting to use so you can see that frame size on the screen. Now I do cover this quite a bit and all of the embroidery videos are my design center that I use. So I won't go through all of that here, but you can also go in and select the grid that you want to see in the background. Like if you just wanted to see the cross grid, you can, you can choose a one inch grid or three eighths, or you can just see that little crosshair in the center. I typically leave mine blank. Maximum speed is your maximum embroidery speed, which is 1,050 stitches per minute. People will say, well, what speed do you embroider at? I embroider at 1,050 stitches per minute, unless I'm using a specialty thread or doing something that requires me to sew, slow my machine down. For instance, if I was sewing lace, I'd probably slow it down if I'm using uh, metallic threads, I'll slow my machine down, but I don't have a reason to slow it down for anything else because it will slow down on certain types of stitches. It will also automatically slow down based on some features that are added to the machine. For instance, for couching, it slows way down to 350 stitches per minute. Embroidery tension can be adjusted for overall embroidery on your machine here. You can also adjust your tension within the settings on your machine for both embroidery and sewing. I typically do not adjust my overall tension at all for anything because I like to adjust it on my own. Embroidery foot height is the default value of the height for your foot. Now, right now it's in inches. If I go to the next page, I can change this to millimeters and we'll go back and you can see that's 1.5 millimeters. If you have this set too high and let's say you don't have thick fabric, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with thread breaks. Leave it on the default unless you have a reason to change it. Embroidery needle stop position allows you to change this so that you stop either with needle down or needle up. I have mine in needle up, but if you wanted to stop a needle down, you can do it. Embroidery foot auto down is a feature that was added as part of upgrade kit one. What this does is it means you no longer have to push your embroidery foot down, meaning your presser foot button here. You can automatically just push the button when it's ready to go in green and it will engage and you can move on. It just makes things a little bit faster. You can change your unit of measure between inches and millimeters, depending on what we're talking about. If it's stitch length, I look at millimeters. If it's talking about measurements, I like inches. Thread color can be adjusted so that you can see either the number of the thread or the color of the thread in embroidery. I like to leave mine on the name of the color because quite honestly, the thread charts that are in the machine for Isocord, which is the thread that I own, are somewhat limited. You can go in and choose your brand of thread chart. And you'll notice that if you choose your brand of thread chart, you'll see more options for thread colors than if you use the original or embroidery, which are going to be brother. Your background color on your screen and embroidery can be selected. So if you wanted to have this as your background to see your embroidery images, or let's just say that you have a hot pink shirt and you want to see that and see the design on this background, you can do that. I'm going to leave mine off. You can also adjust your thumbnail colors and that's these thumbnails that are going to be behind the embroidery designs if you wanted to have a different color in the background here. So if you wanted to see all of those on black, you can do so. I like to leave mine white. You can also adjust the thumbnail size and this can be between a large, a medium, or a small. You can also adjust it though by squeezing or pinching your fingers and I just leave it in the middle. 
Your embroidery basing distance can be achieved either at a distance of zero to plus 12 and the default value is five. You need to change this before you go in and apply a basting stitch and I covered this in, in embroidery. Your next setting is for your background display image. You can scan using the camera function and you can scan doing either fine or uh, standard quality. I usually leave it on fine. But once you scan something, it's saved as a background image. And so if you turn your machine back on the next day to work on something else and you have different fabric, don't be surprised if it's not appearing as a background image on your screen. To delete it, you delete it right here. And I covered this in an embroidery. You can also turn the fabric sensor thickness on or off right here. And then you can also go in and adjust with the LED pointer if you are using the W foot that is an optional foot that actually came with the Dream Machine and it's one that plugs in, so it has an LED pointer. I pers personally don't feel the need to use it because I have a projector on this machine, but that is an optional foot. So continuing with, with our settings, and we're in embroidery, let's go to the page, and we're now on page 11. So we talk about wireless LAN. This is how you set up your LAN, and you can have your Wi-Fi turned on and you can name your machine. When you set up your LAN the first time, you may have to occasionally reset it again for, for a couple of reasons. Perhaps they've come in and they worked on your router or changed something, and you have to go back and set it up. Just go to the wireless LAN setup wizard and follow the screen prompts. The next thing that we'll look at is page 12. And on page 12, if you want to have your machine auto download updates, which are free, you can have it set to auto download. When it's set to auto download, there'll be an exclamation point. You can watch my video on YouTube, which it shows you lesson, uh, I think it's 2.01. And what it does is it's going to show you when that exclamation appeared. Then all I did was choose load and I was ready to start loading that version of the software. This concludes this lesson, which is covering the settings pages on our machine. We will cover all of these settings whenever we're actually in those units and working with those units on our machine that will actually access or use those settings. And you're probably asking yourself, what is the icon that is over in the far right of the screen? And there is a setting that you can use to, to save everything to a USB stick. Since I made some changes on my machine, what I'm going to do is put a USB stick in my machine and let me grab one. And if I want to save these settings, I can do so. Now you might ask yourself, why is it important? Well, if you take your machine to the dealer and they have any reason to take this and to reboot all of your machine or reset it, select this icon right here and that just save those settings to my USB stick. So again, all I had to do is to select it and it wrote those settings pages to my USB stick. And I can go ahead and remove it. So that's how that works. And you will find that this is one of the things that you may wish that you had done. It's not going to give you a message telling you that it saved it there. But then when you go back into your machine and you want to, to use that, you can go look at the image file that it creates and you can see what your settings were. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I'm Terry Maffitt. You'll find my videos on YouTube. I create several playlists 
that help you to choose what portion of the machine that you're interested in learning about. You'll also find I have videos for PE Design 11. I have close to 90 videos for that. And I also have some videos on digital things. I share project level videos and then also some products that I like. I'm not paid or compensated in any way for these videos other than any advertising sense, and I'll use the word sense, I might get from YouTube since I have ads turned on. And for people who are considering YouTube as a way to, to earn money, you really have to work hard at it and work full time. If I was to guess for all of the videos that I have, I probably make pennies on the dollar. So in terms of hours spent recording videos, but that's not the reason I'm doing that. I'm doing it because I want you to learn your machine and I get a lot of fulfillment from paying it forward. Thank you for your time today. Join me on Facebook and Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. There are over 1,500 members in that group, and we're growing each and every day. Have a good day. Thank you for your time.